How are you guys doing? Welcome back to a brand new video here on the channel. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we're talking about Vent Finance, but of course mainly the Vent Launchpad. The Vent Launchpad has a lot of potential as it is fully built under the Cardano and the Polygon blockchain. It is very much famed for having the highest ROI of quarter one 2022 it's looking very professional it has a lot of potential i am super excited to get into this so i hope you guys are too try to give you guys as much value as possible as always and with that out of the way let's get started with the vent launchpad stay tuned so the vent launchpad is an interesting one now why is that exactly we're gonna get into that in just a little bit. Before we do, however, please make sure to like and subscribe, you guys. You don't wanna miss out on all of the content we make here every day. So subscribe and turn on the notifications. It's very much appreciated and you don't wanna miss out, I think, I hope. I mean, if you're here, you probably like Launchpad, so it might as well do it. Also, no doubt I'm no financial advisor. And with that out of the way, let's get started. So as you can see over here in the rundown of quarter one, 2022, Vent Finance has turned out to be one of the launch bets with the highest average ROI, which is basically your return on your investment. Now, I do digress. They only have three projects, one of which, which is very high, which was Gamium, which is why they have such a big ROI. Over here, for instance, in Trustpad, they have a lot of projects, which is why their ROI is only 350. But I digress. Regardless, it is a very, very good ROI and the best one of, uh, yeah, compared to all of these other launch pads. It's better than Polka Starter, Trust Pad, even better than DAO Maker. So that is definitely a very promising introduction to this launch pad. Over here, we're at the home page. You guys, I'm gonna go over everything, but the home page, I'm actually gonna skip out on that. It's not very interesting. It's just not really the place that you're gonna get your value out of. So I'm not gonna linger here for too long. I do feel like it is worth mentioning you guys that they are also a incubator apart from being a launch pad. And of course they have their own token. That's basically all that we can see here on the website. We're gonna move over right away over to their app and all of the other information we can find find the website you guys not too interesting to me definitely make use of the timestamps down below if you're interested in other things we're going to get started with the tiered system as that is one of the most important aspects of any launchpad the vent launchpad tier system is a interesting one although not really at the same time it's much like other launch pads basically you need a certain amount of event tokens staked vent being the native token of this launch pad and of event finance in general you need a bunch of these tokens uh, 5000 in fact for the first tier and when you have these tokens staked you will be able to participate in the idos 5,000 tokens is not a lot, and it will give you a base guaranteed allocation, which they refer to as BGA. Now, they have the second tier that is all the way up to 11,000, and you will basically get a BGA times two. And it goes on like that, all the way up to tier five being uh, 100,000 VAT staked for a BGA times 17.5. Now, what is interesting is that they basically take snapshots of your wallet, meaning that when you have these vent tokens staked, the platform will go out of their way, take a snapshot of everyone's wallet to see how much people have staked. Determined by that, it will allow you to participate in said tier that you belong in. So that is a bit of an interesting way how they actually verify that everyone has the correct tier. They take it over, uh, they talk about it over here in the snapshot period. In a snapshot period, the total numbers of event in your wallet is randomly recorded each day to ensure that you meet the minimum event balance required to participate in the IDO. A typical snapshot period lasts seven days and at the end of the snapshot period, you may or may not get an entry list based on the average holding score. Now, it is important to realize that depending on how much vent tokens you have staked, that will directly determine how long your snapshot period will last. If you have more than 500,000 vent staked, the snapshot period will only take a day versus if you only have, let's say, uh, 5,000 vent staked, 
it will take, like said over here, over a week for the snapshot period to be concluded. You can see that over here as well. You see uh, that the days held from 700,000 vent will only be one day. And over here, it will be uh, seven days. So they go quite in depth on that if you are interested. But overall, this is all that you need to know. This is the amount of vent that you need. Now, how much is that going to cost you? Keep in mind that as you're watching this video, this might not be 100% accurate anymore, but it should theoretically be a good indication. As you can see, the price has flatlined for basically the entirety of 2022. When you're watching this, make sure to verify, but it's probably not going to be too far off. As for right now, the Venn token is going for less than a, a dollar. It is going for 0 0.02 dollar cents. So we just type that into our trusty calculator and we do that times 5,000. And this will bring us to $100, which is a very respectable amount for a first uh, guaranteed tier. So for just $100, you will have yourself a guaranteed tier on the event launchpad very good stuff and that means that they don't actually have any lottery tiers which i like i'm not a big fan of lottery tiers and uh yeah overall you mean getting one bga is already fine if you want more obviously you're gonna have to stake some more tokens but that would be entirely up to you if that would be something you're interested in now for the purposes of education we are also going to quickly go ahead and check the price that it would take to get the very most expensive highest tier which is 100,000 vent uh, staked that would be two thousand dollars which is actually very cheap to uh, participate in tier five uh, if you look at dow maker this will easily be over ten thousand even in a bear market so it is a very very cheap and that is a massive positive for this launchpad so that's the tiers you guys let's move forward i'm not going to waste your time now we're going to move over to how to actually stake your tokens as that is what you'll have to do after you get your tokens now real quick get vent tokens it's everywhere on the app you can click on it anywhere you'll go to uniswap or pancakeswap or anywhere you can just get yourself the tokens it's really simple connect your wallet and go for it really simple not going to go over that in a lot of detail once you get yourself the tokens and you uh, no, actually the wrong order. Once you found the tier you want to be in, you got yourself the tokens. Now you're going to have to stake these tokens. Very simple. You move over to the app and you click on stake. And from there, you will see the APY that you're going to be getting, which is basically just the uh, yeah extra money that you are going to earn by having your tokens staked on top of getting access to the IDO. So it's double. Uh, there's yeah, there's a double reason why you would like to stake your tokens. Uh, program duration will be 240 days and the last day to earn APY would be at the uh, 13th of August and the minimum staking time would be 20 days. I'm not going to say you guys too much because you probably don't really watch this video at the same day it's going to come out. Anyways, here you can very simply type in the amount of vent you would like to stake. Uh, it will actually change the APY, am I right? Uh, let's see. Yes, it will slightly change the APY depending on how much you are going to stake. And here you will basically just have all of the information. You even have a informative video Welcome. if you would like to just check it out and see exactly how the staking process works. You can even click on deposit max. Um, obviously, I have no vent in my wallet, so that's not going to be a thing for me. But you can just type in whatever you want to stake and then you can um, I click on stake here obviously it says get vent tokens right now because i don't have any tokens but that's how you can go ahead and do it awesome very simple very straightforward i love the way how they just uh basically put, put it in your in your face it's very easy for beginners as well i feel like that's very important so that is a big plus that's how you can get uh, your tokens staked here on the event launchpad moving over to the vent finance uh participation steps and that is obviously the next thing that you're going to do, right? You, you, you have the basic information about Vent, you like it, you found the tier that you would like to participate in, you got yourself the tokens, you got them staked, now you need to find an IDO, an initial DEX offering that you would like to actually invest in. How does that go? How does it work? It's very simple. The very first step 
is you have to register or log into the Vent Launchpad. Easy enough, right? <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, then the second one is a bit more complicated. You will have to complete a KYC verification. Now, this is not possible for everybody. I, I'm, yeah, I have to inform you guys that every single IDO on the Vent Launchpad is going to require KYC how to do the KYC verification. I'll get to that in a little bit, don't worry. But yeah, you'll have to do a KYC. Some people are gonna be happy with that, others won't, obviously. Fund your MetaMask wallet with an event for the participation and then see the tier system. We already did that, don't worry about it. Select any ongoing project from the Launchpad dashboard and then register for entry, formally whitelisting on a selected project. And from there, you can move over to, uh, let's see, uh, yeah, hold the vent in the MetaMask throughout the snapshot period. That again is important. You have to get verified by this snapshot period. And again, if you hold the little tokens, it will take up to a week. If you hold a lot, it can be done in as little as 24 hours. But the snapshot period is important as it is basically vent finance verifying that you have the tokens you need to participate. After this snapshot period is done, you can proceed to the IDO participation after a successful entry listing. And over here, you will have all of these steps that you need. Um, we're not gonna look into these things. They're very simple and you can just find this page as well. It's on their app. What we are gonna go ahead and do is click on the KYC verification page to walk you guys through what this is and how to complete the KYC verification. If you're not interested, please look at the timestamps and move over to the next segment as we're going to be talking about the team and we're gonna take a look at the current projects and much more information. But for now, the KYC verification on the Vent Launchpad. Before starting your KYC verification on Vent, you should register and have a copy of your passport, driver's license, government issued ID, or your resident permit handy. Just for the record, you don't need all of this. Either a passport or a driver's license is fine. You just need some identification of yourself so that the Launchpad, in this case, Vent Finance, or the Vent Launchpad, knows that it's you and that you're not a robot, essentially. Select your ID type and the issuing country, and then take the front and the back photo of your selected ID. Then you have to record a selfie video. Now, this is not always the same. In some KYCs, a, a photo will be, it will be fine, but here you will have to make a video. That's fine. It's just a selfie video to uh, make sure that they know that uh, what is said under the passport or the driver's license is in fact you. The entire process takes up to about 30 seconds and you should receive feedback in your email after every successful verified step. Now here they actually also have a guide so they make it very easy for you to understand how to actually do this. Then they talk about the meanings of what KYC and AML actually means. You can go ahead and check that out if you're interested. What I am interested about is why KYC is important for Vent and why do they make their users do this. They say you need to complete the KYC process to ensure no one is impersonating you. Vent also uses those details to make tailor-made improvements for your safety and security while using our platform. In short, if you don't have a KYC, you are exposed for fraud, for impersonation, and it exposes basically your wallet and you as a person. With KYC, you're just that little bit extra secure in the crypto space. And in my opinion, you'll need all of the security you can get because crypto is not regulated. So a KYC is the least that they can do to help you out with that. However, obviously, it's not really uh, possible for everyone to participate because of the key KYC. So that is obviously the, the plain negative to all of this. Uh, is KYC safe? Of course it's safe. Again, I'm no financial advisor, but I can assure you that a KYC is always safe. And yeah, for the rest, there's not much more that you would have to uh, uh, look at. As you can see over here for US investors, the whole process takes a lot longer. And uh, for, for most other uh, people in other countries, it will only take up to 15 to 45 seconds. All of this, you can read up on it. I'm not gonna go too deep into it. This is basically how the KYC process goes. And if you need any more help, Vent Finance has a very, very good help center, which will give you an in-depth, basically tutorial on how to do it. So we're gonna move forward and 
try and keep the video as short and compact for you guys as possible so that you get all of this uh, knowledge inside of your brain without spending too much time of your, uh, you know, your life. So it is finally time to actually move over to the app. I know uh, it's been a while. I should have probably done it a bit sooner. I don't know. I felt like the other topics were very important and kind of just had to be addressed before moving over to the app. Now on the app, there's a couple things you should know. Vent Launchpad is very, very community orientated, basically meaning that before a project get uh, gets launched on the vent finance launchpad, it will first have to be approved by the community. What do I mean? I mean that as you can see here with the little rocket, everyone with an account can vote. And what does that mean? Well, it means that if the project reaches 1500 upvotes, it will eventually be launched and people will be able to participate. If it does not reach the 1500 upvotes before a certain time limit, the project will not be chosen and is not going to uh, be launched here. Now, uh, before people can actually vote, they will first be vetted by the event finance team. So we're only seeing, we're only getting to vote on projects that are already vetted. And then on top as basically a second yeah, uh, second round, second selection round, they will also be voted upon by the community to see what projects make it and what projects don't. I really like this. It gives a little bit of community governments, but you don't require to have staked any tokens for this. You just need an account and just like that, you'll be able to vote I like this. Some people might not. You can have your own opinion on that. And as you can see over here, all of the ongoing projects are on the Polygon Matic network. We're not seeing any Cardano projects, even though they pride themselves in being both a Polygon and a Cardano launchpad, but we're only seeing Polygon, which is understandable Cardano, but there's not a lot of projects launching there. While Polygon is absolutely booming at the time of recording this video. Then again, if you're watching this video a couple months later, make sure to check it out for yourself. Maybe there are also Cardano projects here, but for now it is Matic, Matic, Matic. As you can see, there's a bunch of projects. We're seeing Gamium. This is, uh, as we saw here in the intro, uh, it did a 42 and a 23 X. So it was a very successful project. They are still in the list. That is, by the way, my first, um, not red flag, but just my criticism point. You don't have a filter between old projects and current projects and upcoming projects. Like, yeah, you have upcoming and old projects, but you don't have previous projects, which is unfortunate. Anyways, here we see the gaming Gamium <laughs> PSO. This was obviously one of their more successful launches and it happened in quarter one of 2022. It is still listed as an active project, which is interesting. Uh, it's because they are still actually releasing. Uh, as you can see here, the TGE was at the 30th of March and then here at the 28th of July, uh, that was a couple of days ago, they had uh, the 3.75% uh, release. And at the 27th of August, they'll have another one. And then at the 26th of September as well, which is why it is still listed as active because it is still releasing. Now here is a UI and UX design that I really like. This is what sets vent launchpads apart from other launchpads. We are seeing a beautiful interface, not just with a voting mechanism, but also with a comment section. Here people can talk with each other and you can even just like in Reddit upvote each other's comments and basically have conversations with each other on the projects. If it's bad, you can let people know. If it's good, you can let people know. If you have questions, you can ask it. That is something I really, really like. But there's something else that they put on this uh, page as well. They put all of the team, they put all of the information and you can even see the pool and of course the upcoming releases. So it is an amazing, amazing function all built in on the Vent Launchpad app. So that is just absolutely amazing. As you can see, you can just type something here like, I love this project. And just like that, uh, you will be able to put it down. And I don't have a name, so it's nipperywinkle595. But there you go, a, a comment has been placed. It's just as easy as that. We can actually look at some of the current projects to see what the community sentiment is and if the Vent Launchpad has any good projects going on right now. So 
uh, an amazing way that we can actually use to uh, on this particular launchpad to, to see how people see the uh, projects is by looking at the comments that people are placing. We see here someone from five months ago saying, I see huge potential in this project. The idea of Gamium is really fantastic in the long term. Web3 technology and the metaverse are the future of the crypto world. I wish you the best of success and I hope to be lucky enough to participate in the pre-sale. And again, I will refer back to this prior tweet. As you can see in the top left, Gamium did a 23x and a 42x at its peak and a bunch of other projects launched uh, by this launch, but have done very well, such as Nunu Spirits and Animal Concerts. So they do have a track record of very successful projects, especially in the earlier quarters of 2022. Regardless though, they have a bunch more. We see here some have a lot of upvotes, others have less. This one has 2200 update upvotes. It is Acta Finance. And again, here you can read up everything on the project, the problem, the mission, the solution. Here you have the team. Uh, here you see what the community is saying about it. Uh, it is not about boo or market. It is about uh, a more stable market. Lately, the whole market has been volatile. Be careful launching benefits projects within the community. Waiting for a bull run token distribution only shows that you're just profit minded short term project abusing retail. And uh, here's someone saying good project. So again, I'm not going to go too deep into it. You can check it yourself. That's the whole point that you're able to go out and check these projects out for yourself and what the community is saying. Go ahead and engage with these people if you want. All I am saying is that thus far, there have been some good projects with some good returns and the API and the ROI rate of Vent Finance has been the highest of most other, has been much higher than other launch pads in quarter one of 2022, which is very, very promising. And again, I love the interface. I love the community governance and the, the voting mechanism. I like that there are so many, you know, polygon projects if you guys don't know my reviews i love polygon and i also like cardano but uh, yeah i don't see any cardano projects at the moment here again is animal concert which did i believe out of my head a 3x and uh, it actually has its dge on the it had it on the 29th of march and we have another actually look at this uh where is this da, 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 da. yeah so we have another 25 percent release at the 25th of september we do have some people annoyed here in the comments, but then again, I, I'm not going to go too deep into that. What people are saying that is up for you to uh, to look at and have your own judgment about. Okay, so uh, for the rest, the interface is very clean. Here you can connect your wallet. Here you can click on your chain. Here you're going to see all of your future transactions. I don't have any transactions on that launchpad, so I, it's not there for me. But if you do have uh, transactions on Venn Finance, you can see them over there. Here you can verify your account. Uh, that is also very simple. That is basically the KYC. Here again, you have lots of links to the help center, um, how to get started with the vent launch pad. If this video didn't give you all of the information you needed, you can always go here and get everything written down again as well. Here you have their community. There you can basically just see their YouTube, their Twitter, their Telegram, their blog, their Discord and everything. It's actually very, very important to stay in touch with the social media of a launchpad where you participate in. And that is mainly because you will have to stay up to date with all the announcements, what's going on, what is the community thinking, are there any new launches, etc. So make sure if you are interested in event finance to go ahead and follow them or at least keep an eye out for it. Now, the most important, or at least in my opinion, the most important part of this video, the team who is behind Vent Finance, who are we going to be trusting our tokens to? And yeah, basically, who are they? Do we believe in them? Do we think that they are a good team? And let's dive into them and see who they are, what they do, and what we're dealing with here. So, as I could dig up, it seems to be a Spanish team. I believe it's based in Madrid. Most people here are Spanish and they're also located in Spain, making this a European company, which is of course absolutely fine. I myself live in Europe as well. I do know we have a lot of uh, viewers from the USA. Don't worry about that. Again, for you guys, the KYC would just be a little bit more tedious, but you obviously will be able to participate nonetheless. Then we see here a bunch of uh, team members. We see head of legal, 
that's not very important for us. Partnerships, that is Gonzalo Goria. Um, let's see, we have the community manager, Tolani Ad Ad <laughs> Um And here we actually have the co-founder, uh, Tigran. So we're gonna actually look at them. And we don't have a team page, so all we have is LinkedIn. They are fully docs though, which is very good, meaning that we can trace all of them back. A non docs team is obviously very sketchy, so it's good to see that they're nice and doxed and that they have LinkedIn pages. The co-founder seems to be a cybersecurity analyst and an advisor, but also uh, he's also done consultancy and project management. So that is some strong, you know, uh, experiences and uh, yeah, skills for a co-founder and basically a CEO type of a role. So that is good to see. He's been working at Vent Finance since January 2021, which is also kind of when the project obviously started as he's the founder. Yes, big brain, Rick, big brain. Uh, he has a track record going way back all the way to 2015, at least on his LinkedIn, meaning he has at the very least more than five years of relevant working experience before working already at this point more than two years at Vent Finance. So this is definitely someone with some uh, experience I do would like to find yes there we go this is the other co-founder and this is the actual CEO this is Lucas Mato actually sounds a bit more French than it does Spanish um, now here are a couple of points that he does and what he likes and oh, that's about it <laughs> he has a pretty big following so and obviously he's also completely doxxed my let, let's take a quick look at his experience He's worked for five years at uh, Stratecma as a non-executive chair, practice lead, operational strategy consultant, uh, two years and one month as a project manager and a managing partner here at GP Method, and then assistant tour manager over here at RLM Finance, and that is back in 2017. So also here, definitely many years of relevant working experience already uh, which is a very big plus. If you guys are not aware, there are plenty of launch pads with team members and CEOs and even co-founders with just no experience in the blockchain or very little experience at all. Obviously many teams that are not doxxed whatsoever and that is a big problem. So yes, I mean, obviously it could have been better. We could have seen 20 years of blockchain experience, but overall these seem to be people, you know, with some decent experience and a good track record. So that is a, well, let's call it a green flag. They also have a pretty big team now that I look at it. So overall, I like it. It's looking good. And with that out of the way, let's actually move into the white paper to get all of the details that we still need to understand before we can properly invest into this launchpad. After that, we're gonna quickly look at their social media and their community sentiment. We're gonna move over to their Telegram, their YouTube, their Twitter, etc. So a lot more information is coming right up. So you wanna stay tuned for that. For now, however, let's take a quick break, minimize the screen, drop a like if you didn't already, and move over and pop a comment down below. Tell me like what other launch pits would you like to see? Maybe take a sip of water, I'm gonna do that. And then we're gonna move over to the next segment of this video, cheers. All right, so the white paper, this is going to give all of the information about the company, Vent Finance and the Vent Launchpad, what they're actually trying to do, what their biggest inspirations are, and we should be able to take a look at their tokenomics as well, which is something we haven't done yet. So I'm going to breeze through this a little bit. There's a lot of fluff as always in a white paper, a lot of just normal statements that we don't really care about. Like we care about a safe environment and all that, every launchpad, should or does so that's not very relevant obviously it's in the white paper let's see what they say over here a funding platform event finance is the new benchmark for simplistic and accessible community launchpad platforms so here they have a quick overview of how it works uh, a project creates a profile and applies to be listed on ventup the vent team vets the project based on ventup quality standards right and then the third step would be to, once the project is accepted, the project is live and is ready to be upvoted by the community, like I talked about, then they will need 1500 votes. The project needs to reach a predetermined threshold for the launch applications to be IDO. As of the recording this video, it's 1500. I'm not sure what it would be now. Probably not gonna change that much. 
Token holders that are staking Vent can use their generated Ventables to receive an allocation in the project. Right, don't worry about that. You just stake and then you can participate. And then the project will launch, will launch on Vent Up. Very simple, but still important to note down if you are going to be investing here in Vent Finance. Now here they go in a little bit more depth on the community feedback which basically is the being able to upvote, being able to comment and being able to upvote comments under the projects in the event finance app. And uh, they say here, the comment functionality is project specific and enables users to provide feedback about certain projects. This allows users to overview the general sentiment and offers additional support for the investment process. For the project creators, it's valuable feedback on their progress. That's right. And in fact, a little addition to that, it's also a, uh, well, a, a, a availability for the project owners to communicate with the people on this launchpad, maybe answer some questions. And it's, a, it's an opportunity for them to show that they are engaged and help potential new investors. Then we have the interactive forums. Vent Up's interactive forums allows users to engage and to discuss all matters related to crypto and the blockchain. Users can post, comment, learn, discuss, support, debate, and connect with people who share similar interests. They will be available to everyone and will be entirely user generated. They will not constitute as a source of financial advice in any way. <laughs> of course, Vent Up will act as a social network and not an investment forum. Our interactive forums have multiple functionalities to ensure that this environment remains free of harassment, bullying, scams, etc. Right. So that really links into what they have been doing with the voting and the comments. They are making not just a launchpad and an uh, accelerator and incubator. They are making a social network platform where investors and like-minded people can talk with each other and to each other and for each other about these projects and ideas and much more. I really like that. And I think that is a little bit of the future. I feel like launchpads will be evolving and eventually a social network around the launchpad seems like a very natural, yeah, next step in the evolution of launchpads. User acquisition strategy. For every new project listed on Ventup Launchpad, the network effect grows. Demand increases and attracts more significant numbers of token holders and community members. The Vent Finance team needs to attract new projects while maintaining high quality standard to ensure future sustainability. To achieve this, we implemented the following strategy. Webinars, incubation programs, conferences such as hackathons, social media marketing and PR events. Very cool. Uh, again, a lot of community engagement. Ven Finance is doing a very good job at that. Um, now, here we have an, a bit of a more exciting part of the white paper, the differentiation. What makes Vent Finance different than other launch pads in obviously the same niche? Vent Finance differentiates from the competition by focusing on being a community driven and a uniform platform for transparent investment services. That's right. So here we have all in one platform, community driven, transaction based and committee. We see here DAO maker in committee and all in one platform. And we see Vent all the way down at all in one platform and community driven. So like I said before, uh, they put a lot of governments to the community and that differentiates itself, but it's also an all in one platform, making it very much different than many other big launch pads, such as over here, Polka Starter, BNC Pad and Cart Starter. I'm not recognizing this logo, my bad. And here, of course, DAO Maker. So over here, they say users are prioritized ecosystem network effects and transparency. Ooh, now this is interesting. I love these type of graphs. So we see here the blockchains uh, from Vent. He, they are on Polygon. Here we see card starter on Ethereum. Uh, inclusive sale allocation is a yes. Customer support, a yes. Customer support, yes. Sorry, Cedify, yes. 
social platform yes community upvotes yes insurance yes and as you can see all of these are yes 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 and for instance card starter only has insurance project support and dex now if you do want a very in-depth review on card starter it's live on the channel right now you can go check it out if you want and it will give you all of the information you need. So if you do feel like comparing card starter to vent in detail, move over to that video and check it out. For now though, I feel like the most important thing that's why it's highlighted is the market cap and valuation. Vent has a market cap of only 678,000. Card starter, um, this is already not true. If I say it correctly, I believe card starter um, reduced their supply by their market cap by a lot but i'm not entirely certain actually uh, valuation vent 7 million card starter 130 and here 536 million so an, an interesting comparison and uh, they love doing the comparison graphs of course i started the video with a comparison graph as well and here's another one i like them i mean what can i say uh, here the point allocation system of course there will be staking rewards there will be Ventables, which is uh, called Venti, the token. Uh, it is a fungible, non-transferable token that connects with users' wallets addresses. The standard speed of Ventable farming is 100% monthly, meaning that if you stake 1,000 Vent tokens for a month, you will receive 1,000 Venti tokens to be spent on Ventop launchpad allocation tickets. So essentially, that is how it works, right? You can, you can stake your tokens and with the Venti tokens, you will then be able to participate pretty straightforward. Apart from staking, users can also lock their tokens for a fixed period, three, six, nine, or 12 months. Using lockups means that you can't withdraw your tokens. This is to encourage stability and consistent growth of the Vent Finance ecosystem. Right, pretty straightforward. Here they have some uh, unstaking examples. Of course, it means that if you unstake early, you will have a, um, a fee that has to be paid. Here they talk about the Curtano blockchain and the smart contracts. We chose the Curtano blockchain as the foundation for our architecture because we believe in their philosophy of ensuring the community's voice is heard. Curtano enables quick and cheap, cheap transactions and experience is paramount for our users. Ad additionally, Curtano scalability solutions were highly desired within our decision-making process. Our cross-chain interoperability solution allows developers to convert smart contracts on other chains into Cardano smart contracts. This ensures projects easy project migration to the Cardano blockchain. This convenience enables Event Finance to be the flagship platform for Cardano related projects. And that is in fact true. Event Finance is definitely in the top of the Cardano projects as a launchpad. Over here, we have their roadmap, obviously very important to look at their process and hopefully what they are planning on doing. Uh, we can see that it's quite an old roadmap. We're starting at quarter three, 2022, 21, sorry. And we only move over to quarter two, 2022. And we have already at the time of making this video, we're already in quarter three. So this is outdated, unfortunately. The Chainlink VRF integration, the Ethereum smart contract, the Polygon smart contract, and the Van token launch together with the token claim station. Moving over to quarter four, we saw the vent up version 1.0 with fixed bugs, improved UI UX. I can definitely tell that they improved at a dash touch platform. Polygon smart contract with staking, Cardano smart contracts with crowd seal contracts, and two sided platform beta release and Polygon Cardano bridge. Then quarter one also improved UX UI again. This is already version 1.5 and the ISPO contracts. And then in quarter two, the curated third-party services, project firms release, ad services integration. Oh, and look at this, the direct purchase of event token with fiat. That is obviously a very big move, being able to buy event token with just normal currencies. Then here we finally have the tokenomics, about time that we actually discuss this. The total supply is 250,000 with the initiation with the initial circulating supply being 29 billion. 
No, I am super stupid. That is 29 million. <laughs> Seed sale price is at 0 0.012. Private A was at 0 0.018. Private B was at 0 0.024. Marketing round 0 0.024. Interesting that this is the same price. Public round, obviously the most expensive at 0 0.028. And then we have the total amount raised and that was 1.3 million. And the total amount of events sold was over 67 million. So that is an all right DGE in my opinion. And the, the token prices are very cheap and affordable as well. Then here we see the market cap at 63 and the private round at 175, private round uh, 217 marketing round 248 and the public uh, round initial market cap was 434,000 here you can see the fully diluted market cap you can pause it if you want to look at it in a little bit of more detail this has obviously already happened as the TGE of event finance was already a while ago uh, here you have to no it's not here here you can see it nice and pretty in a graph. We see the founding team getting 20%. That's quite a lot, but um, still within the realm of normal. Going above 20%, that would make it a bit much, but 20% is fine. Advisors and partnerships, 10%. That is quite a lot. For comparison, the average of for advisory is only about 3%. So 10% is a lot. Of course, there's partnerships included in that as well, but then it's still quite a lot regardless. 13.2% for liquidity is fine. Ecosystem growth for 30%. You see that a lot with all-in-one platforms, especially with social media included. So 30% is nothing out of the ordinary there. Public sale with 5.3, marketing round 4.5, and here private B, 3, private A, 8, and the seed round at 6%. Pretty straightforward tokenomics here, nothing too crazy or out of the ordinary. Pretty ugly graph though, but you know, that's not the most important part, is it? Then we see here the token release schedule. And also this is quite normal. We see a 15% unlock at TGE for the seed round. And obviously the public, wow, actually this is not very ordinarily. Public round releases 50% at TGE and 50% quarterly, so that is huge and here you can see it nice in a graph again the tge has already happened so it's not very important anymore but it is good to look at uh, to see you know how it went and what their tokenomics are of course then here we see the token utility with the project assets that is obviously just you know <laughs> the biggest utility of a launchpad token is to be able to participate so that is obviously utility number one you will also have funding currency the Venn token is usable as a medium of exchange representing a standard value, which is issued to participate in fixed pools, swap up, swap on Vent Up's launchpad. Projects creators can choose to receive funding from investors in Vent. This reduces the success fee for Vent Up. And of course, you will have the platform governance. That is all for the white paper. Very comprehensive, easy to read white paper. There was not a lot of fluff in there and the tokenomics were good. Roadmap a little bit outdated, but of course that is quite hard to, to keep a, a good track of that. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to complain about that whatsoever, you guys. So yeah, I um, like it. I'm liking it. Let's move over and take a quick look at their token in a bit more detail before moving over to their social media and to their community sentiment. So the token right now is again at 0 0.02. It hasn't always been like this. Um, it started actually with a very, very good increase. So everyone who participated in the TGE made a lot of profit. As you can see, it started at 0, 0.0, started at 0 0.3 ish. And over here at the peak, people had uh, were able to sell the token for $1.3. Uh, it then went down a bit as obviously everyone started to drop their tokens after TGE. And then there was another surge. Why exactly that is, I am not sure. It was pretty big. And after that, it started going down again. So that it had two more surges, one over here in early 2022, end of January, and one here in February. After that, the coin has basically only dropped off after it flatlined over here uh, around quarter two. And it has flatlined ever since. And now we are here with a pretty low price for the launchpad. Regardless, though, everyone seems to be bullish over here on Coin and Market Cap. And yeah, just overall bullish sentiment thus far. 
If we move over to their contract, we can see that there are only 424 holders. That is not actually a lot at all. It's a very, very little. Um, we're also seeing that there is a lot of transfers, though, more than 6,000. You can see the transfers are happening. Uh, oh, that's actually not a lot. <laughs> well, it didn't happen now, at least. Look at this. It must have happened uh, some other time because there is not being a lot transferred, which is normal with a launchpad token. Uh, moving over to the holders, we can see that 59% is owned by one wallet. Uh, the value is uh, nine, almost 4 million. Right. So we can definitely see that, mo that there's not a lot of holders, but the holders that are in the vent launchpad are whales. We can see here uh, 108. Thousand. We see 99,000. Obviously, the big whales over here, the top three, with uh, nearly a million, and here more than a million. This nearly 4 million. Ridiculous. Here, also, all of these holders have at least more than a thousand, then a very steep drop off, uh, with other members owning only a couple hundred dollars worth of the token. Basically, goes on and on like that. And after the top 100, we are basically just arriving at very, very small, uh, below $150. But uh, yeah, that is probably why the Launchpad has a lot of money circulating, but it has a lot of vent basically staked. But it's not because it has a lot of holders, it's because it has a lot of wheels. Now, this is not very much a positive. It is making the price very versatile. If let's say their biggest whale, who's owning 60% of the tokens, was to sell all of his vent finance tokens right now, then obviously the price would just plummet. If we look to the 24 hour graph, we can see some massive liquidity over here, uh, just the price dropping and spiking. And it is much related to the fact that there are whales holding a good chunk of the event token. So that is interesting to look at. For now, though, that is just about it. Let's move over, though, to their social media. Social media, nothing very out of the ordinary as well. We do see a YouTube channel bigger than normal. Usually launch pads don't have a massive uh, YouTube following. Venn Finance is different. They nearly have 10 thousand subscribers over on YouTube. They're actually posting some pretty cool stuff as well. Not very often though, it's, this has been a couple months, but you can see here, this is the CEO of event hosting AMAs and posting them on the event finance YouTube channel. And um, there's a bunch of stuff. Most of these things are AMAs. Actually, all of them seem to be AMAs, apart from a couple of trailers that they've made for the launch pad and that they've posted. But overall, they seem to all be uh, AMAs. But yeah, overall, pretty cool that they do all of that. It's awesome to see. And moving over to their Twitter, we can see that also here they have a very large following, more than 67,000 followers. In fact, we are seeing a very active posting uh, two hours ago, 18 hours ago. So they're posting basically every day, multiple times a day, really. Um, because of that, they still actually do have quite some interaction. Uh, here they made a little, uh, a little animation, very pretty. We're seeing 12 likes, that's nothing crazy. Uh, let me try and find a tweet where they actually had some comments. Um, this is a happy seventh anniversary for Ethereum. So that is not very much related to event finance. And yeah, people just seem to be celebrating with them. Uh, can I find any community sentiment over here? I don't think so, their Twitter, it just seems to be pretty like low key, pretty laid down. People are not complaining or asking any questions. They don't have that much traction to begin with anyways. But yeah, it's, it's quite all right, I suppose. Uh, they do have, of course, a very big Twitter. They also have a very big Telegram. Their Telegram is a bit more active. I'm not going to show it because there's not much value in it. It's just people talking, but they do have a pretty big following right over there. And yeah, their Telegram and Discord are doing uh, most of the carrying. Their Twitter and their YouTube, although having a lot of followers, don't have that much interaction, but they're there and they are looking fine. Last but not least, I also have a medium. You can read up on everything that I didn't cover in this video. So you can just go and check all of that out. They're actually having a lot of um, blogs and they're actually adding to them uh, every single uh, month at least. So here, for instance, five reasons to join Wing Riders, one of their RDOs. So this is actually pretty interesting. They did recently partner 
uh, with Hacken. You can actually see it here in Coin Market Cap as well uh, in the audits. You can click on it and you can check out. This is one of their recent partners. It is going to help them secure their um, their their launchpad. So that is uh, just stuff that you don't really pick up unless you read their blogs and follow them on social media. That's why it is so important. And the blogs seem to be pretty high quality. I read a couple before making this video and I did really enjoy them. They put a lot of time and effort into them and they post them regularly. So I really only have good things to say about the medium of event finance. All right, you guys, that was basically it for this video. We covered everything from in and out, uh, what Vent Finance is, what the Vent Launchpad does, why is it different than other launch pads, how to participate, the token, the partners, you know, uh, the social media, the community sentiment, the team behind it, the white paper tokenomics roadmap, you name it. We did everything. And right now you should have more than enough information and value to make up your mind is this something for you? Would you enjoy to work with Vent Finance or invest in it? Uh, if you do still have any questions, make sure to ask me. I love having a discussion with you guys or replying to comments. If you want an actual conversation, you can always join our Discord. We are 5,000 strong and we are fully welcoming you guys to join that and talk. I have two AMAs every single week. So if you would like to join me live, you can do that. And with that out of the way, thank you guys so much for joining in again. I really hope you enjoyed and I will see you all hopefully at Venn Finance because I kind of like this one. Anyways, you guys, that was it for me. Ciao, ciao.